What's up guys, Joe DeFranco here. We're starting something new today. Um, because I've been slacking a little bit over the past couple months, even years on my Ask Joe, as our schedules have gotten busier over here, we decided to do Ask DeFranco's Gym videos. We'll be able to get them to you a lot quicker and um, we'll be able to get more information in less time. I think a lot of people rather watch a five minute video or a three minute video rather than uh, read a big long article. So. Today is the first installment of the Ask DeFranco's Gym videos. You could still send in your question to our Ask Joe email account, ask-joe at defrancostraining.com, or at DeFranco's Gym on Twitter. If you send us a question there, you have a real good chance that we will answer it right here on one of our videos. So today we are here with Ed, our intern. Um, Ed was nice enough to come by today. He's uh, our summer intern. He was fired twice yesterday and we brought him back just for the video, so we want to thank Ed for coming uh, today and helping us out. The first question we're going to tackle is box squat versus regular squat. We got a million emails asking, what do we like better, what do we do more? First, I want to preface it by saying one is not better than the other. They both have uh, their benefits and drawbacks. For the purpose of teaching the squat to, to new athletes, I prefer the box squat. Um, if you go on my website, you know why. Uh, we talk about having an actual implement behind you enables people to sit back more. A lot of people have a tendency to shoot their knees forward, so having the box behind you helps them to sit back more, which will really activate their glutes and their hamstrings, which is weak on a lot of people. Also, with a box, you could set the depth, so you don't have to worry uh, how deep or how shallow the squat is. You could set the depth where you want it. You could make it, make a uh, note of where they were so you know exactly how deep they're squatting each time. And you can see on our box right now, we have some mats set up. So first, Ed's gonna demonstrate how most people usually squat. The things that we see generally are a little bit too narrow of a stance. When they start squatting down, you'll notice a rounding in the back. The knees have a tendency to, to cave in. The heels come up off the ground. Um, what Ed is doing right now is unfortunately a common uh, picture that most of us have. If you're a trainer or a coach, you've probably seen this type of squat before. That's very good, very badly good. That's usually what it looks like. Put a barbell on their back and it gets a lot worse. So um, I think we all have our own ways of teaching a squat. What I wanted to show you today as far as the box squat is concerned, it's uh, a little known trick that I, I don't see enough coaches doing is teaching the box squat from the bottom up. So another great benefit of the box squat is I can have Ed just sit down on the box, not think about anything. I can physically take his legs, why well, don't you get out a little bit? Physically place his legs where I want, you're gonna point your toes out a little bit. So I can set his legs and feet before there's tension on his body and he's not really weight bearing his entire body. So I can fix his legs right where I want, I want his knees pushing his out even more. Even force him out a little more. Most of his weight distribution is on the outside of his feet and his heels. You'll notice we don't do a, a real uh, rotated out position anymore. We keep the toes slightly out, but then I'm going to have Ed, we call it screwing your feet into the ground. I'm going to have him generate torque by pushing his little toe out into a sneaker this way. So he's going to come out that way where his foot isn't moving much. But right when he does that, I feel tension in his hips, in his quads, in his glutes. So we set his legs right there. His legs are set right where I want them. And now right from here, I can have him just march his back slightly. I'm going to, before you stand up, just come forward a little bit, but keep that arch. A little more tension on the quads, push the knees out a little bit more. Now keeping the knees out, stand straight up. Good, now just without thinking about anything, just sit down. So without, we can take the eccentric out of it because when you teach and you give too many coaching cues and, and you're talking too much at once, it's just going to confuse your client. So we can take away the concentric portion, have them sit down, re-go over all the cues again, knees out, screw your feet into the ground, pinky toes are coming out into, the, into your sneakers, arch your back, slight forward lean, we're going to tuck those elbows a little bit more this way, underneath the bar. Now tuck the chin. With the chin too, we're gonna coach a double chin. Instead of looking up, we're just gonna tuck the chin. He's gonna keep his head square, looking straight ahead, and stand up right from there. And now from here, I'm fast forwarding a little bit, but now we can teach the lowering. Again, this is why we love the box. So now I can say, Ed, bring your hips back. Don't bend your knees, just hips back, hips back, 
Keep bringing your hips back. Now start bending your knees. Now push your knees out. Knees out, 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 out. Now stand up. Now want your hips coming back a little more and force your knees out more like a groin stretch. Knees out, knees out, knees out, knees out. Come back up. We're going to go one more. Hips first. Hips. Doesn't matter if you're falling, you got the box there. Knees out, knees out, knees out. Control right there. We're asking you to pause. Right now, if the box was a scale, Ed weighs 195. I always use the cue if the box was a scale. When you're sitting on the box, we want you holding enough tension that if the box was a scale, you would read about half your weight. So if this was a scale, Ed's sitting on the scale right now, but it would only read about 100 pounds. That's how you know you're, you're holding enough tension and you're not relaxing on the box, which is a huge, huge drawback and uh, a danger of box squats, and it's why it gets a bad rap. But if you're holding tension, you're gonna, it's going to be very safe and easy on your knees and low back. You can relax. That's, that takes a lot of energy and tension to do it that way. So those are really your, your a quick kind of quick way to teach the box squat. Bottom up, and you notice the coaching cues I used were hips back, knees out. When you're coaching an athlete something new, one to two word coaching cues, one cue at a time. Don't keep it, uh, don't get overly complicated with it. So give that a shot, try to coach it from the bottom up, see how that works for your athletes. And keep checking back uh, our website and our YouTube page because we're gonna try to put these videos out weekly. We're gonna try to get you at least once a week. So that's it for episode one. Uh, we want to thank Ed again, and uh, you're fine.